Hi everyone, uh, my name is Maureen Lurch and I'm the Library Director here at Wayne College Library and I've put together a presentation to help you all with your literature search, your career interest paper. So um, I'm going to be covering the research part of it, like how to find your article, and then uh, you'll have a separate presentation that will talk specifically about how to do your APA citation and format your paper in the APA style. So this presentation uh, will cover how to get your article and then you'll, you'll want to watch the other presentation for the rest of it. Um, and before I get started, I wanted to show you where you can find information after watching this video uh, for more information on how to do the project. I put together a LibGuide for this assignment so I'm going to show you how to locate that LibGuide and um, navigate it so if you forget everything that you've heard in this uh, video you can go back just for you know hints and tips on how to uh, do well on your project. So I'll show you that here in a moment. Okay, so right now I'm starting out at the Wayne College Library homepage. And to get there, you can, uh, through my Akron, select Wayne Library from the libraries listed, or you can Google it, Wayne College Library, and I usually add Orville, Ohio to get to the right Wayne Library. And then um, you could also type in wayne.uakron.edu and then click on the link for the library on the gold bar and it will always take you here. Now when you're on our page, uh, I want to show you how to find all of our LibGuides. Um, we have uh, lots that we've developed for our various courses. So scroll past all of the search uh, resources that we have listed and then you'll see a section for LibGuides. Um, now there are lots of LibGuides in addition to the Wayne College LibGuides, uh, but these are the ones that uh, the librarians here at Wayne College have put together. So I'm clicking on the list of LibGuides and the assignment LibGuides are listed first. So these are in alphabetical order by the name of the course, but below there's also general topic guides and um, different kinds of guides that you could look at. But the one that I'm looking for is actually an assignment guide for your assignment and it's listed under Introduction to Nursing Career Interest Literature Search. So I'll, I'll go ahead and follow the link to this uh, LibGuide and um, at the top of the page you'll see that there's a link uh, that has a graphic of Wayne College Library. So if you ever get lost on the LibGuide, if you click on this it will take you back to our home page. Also at the top of the page there are several tabs. So there's more than just what's on this initial first tab, but you can also um, look at a specific search example, an exp explanation of peer review, some information about citing an APA style, which you'll hear more about in your next presentation, and then also how to use Full Text Finder and Google Scholar. But most of the information you're going to need is on the Home tab, and this is what I'm going to uh, go over with you today, uh, how to search the CINAHL database and how to do an advanced search to, to meet all the criteria of your course. So if um, you watch this video and you're like, hey, where did she click to get to the nurse as a first author? You can go back to this LibGuide and it will uh, show you exactly what I clicked on. So before we actually start searching, one of the important components of your assignment is to make sure that you're finding an article that would be considered professional or peer-reviewed or, or out of a professional or peer-reviewed scholarly journal. So I wanted to just spend a couple minutes talking about, well, what does that mean? How is that different from other things that I might find? How do I know um, if it's actually from a peer-reviewed journal? So you can find articles about nursing and nursing careers and all kinds of resources. You can find them in books, of course, um, but in the world of periodicals, magazines, newspapers, scholarly journals, you're going to find articles from nur about nursing in all of those types of resources. So, for example, there could be an article in Newsweek about what it's like to be a nurse, or maybe there's a shortage of nurses and they're talking about that, or even Psychology Today. Now, those are more popular type resources, and of course, you're going to want to be reading those types of articles too, but for this assignment we want to kind of move you more towards the more scholarly or academic sources and those are the ones that would be coming out of professional or peer-reviewed journals. Uh, professional 
uh, resources would be ones that are actually published with the professional nurse in mind. I'm talking about something like Ohio Nurses Review. They tend to be very newsy in nature, so they keep you updates of trends, things that are going on in your field. And then if you keep moving on to the more scholarly sources, you're going to be finding more peer-reviewed sources, or what we would consider a peer-reviewed scholarly journal, things out of like the American Journal of Nursing. Um, and then there's a lot of journals out there about specialties in nursing. These are actual research-based journals, and they go through a process of peer review where before they're published, they are checked by other professionals in the field, that's the peer review part, to make sure that they follow proper scientific method, and they double check their sources. They make sure that the information that's provided um, is the best possible research. And then if it doesn't pass that test, then it goes back to the authors to fix it before it ever gets published. So what we're aiming for are articles that come out of the peer reviewed scholarly journal world. And there are ways to search the database I'm going to show you to make sure that those are the types of resources that you're retrieving. Okay, so now that you know what kinds of literature you're really aiming for, those scholarly peer-reviewed journals, um, a lot of you are probably chomping at the bit to actually hit the database and start searching. But I do have a recommendation, and it's kind of a strong recommendation, that before you start searching, uh, get out some paper and a pencil or a pen, whatever you like to uh, take notes with, and do some brainstorming before you start searching, and then dedicate that piece of paper um, for revising your search as you go. So for this particular paper or project, I'm thinking that you'll want to start out by thinking about the nature of the job that you're going to be looking for. So in the examples that I'm going to show you, uh, I was thinking I would look up articles about being a trauma nurse. Okay, so I might put trauma nurse on the paper and then start brainstorming all the different ways that you could call that profession. So you might call it emergency nursing or emergency room nursing or, or even transport nursing. And then you're going to want to keep that paper out because once you start searching you're going to get inspiration um, from the search results. So you're going to be looking at those search results and say, hey, you know, I never thought of calling it that before. So then you just add it to your uh, brainstorm list. And then if you wrote something down that doesn't work or means really something else, you just scratch it off your list. So that way you can be a little bit of a little bit organized before you hit the database and then have a place to kind of keep your notes as you go. And that's just a good habit for any kind of big project that you might be working on is brainstorm before you start and keep track of your searching as you go. So before we start our literature search by going into a database, let's first just review what exactly is a database. Um, and hopefully uh, you've learned about this in our information literacy modules, but if not, that's okay. Uh, but basically a database, especially a library research database, is just a file of digitized records that tends to be related to a specific subject or field, in this case nursing, that's organized for ease and speed of search and retrieval. So you are basically searching a bunch of records about uh, magazine and journal records related to nursing in this particular database. And the database we recommend is one that you'll become more familiar with the further you get along in your academic career in nursing. Um, it's called CINAHL. And that's an abbreviation, and it stands for the Cumulative Index of Nursing and Allied Health Literature. So it indexes articles in the field of nursing and allied health. Now, there are other databases out there. Maybe you're already familiar with Academic Search Complete, which is a very general database. It does have some nursing in it. And then there's other databases like um, Ovid's Nursing and Health Professional Journals. That's another database we have access to, or even Medline. Um, but for this assignment, um, go ahead and start your search in CINAHL, because it has a lot of the limiters you're going to want to use uh, that are part of it the assignment. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is bring up CINAHL and we're going to start searching. Okay, so there are a variety of ways that you can access the CINAHL database. I'm going to show you a couple, but of course it's also listed on the University of Akron Libraries website, so if, if that's the website you tend to use, it's there as well. Uh, right now I'm starting out at the Wayne College Libraries website, and if you scroll down, um, you could, of course, go to 
the LibGuide that I showed you earlier, and then there's a link to the database there. So if we go back into the Intro to Nursing um, LibGuide, I provide you with a link right, right away. So if you're on the LibGuide, just go ahead and follow that link. Now, however, if you are at uh, the Wayne College Library's website and you just want to look at all the different databases, if you scroll past the search box and you see where it says search other databases, here are some other options. Uh, if you go to the databases by title or subject, you can simply type in the name of the database or browse by subject uh, to locate all the different databases. Now, if you come to this record here, um, I just want you to stop and look at it. It, it describes the database uh, just like I did earlier. However, you're not in the database yet. So what we find uh, when we're helping students is sometimes they start typing in their search up in this search bar, and that's not where you want to go. You want to actually go into the database by clicking uh, or selecting the title of the database. Now, if you're at home, it will stop and ask you to log in with your UANet ID and password, or if you came to this database after already logging into your My Akron account, it should probably just let you in. But this is what the database looks like. Um, many of you who are familiar with other EBSCO databases like Academic Search Complete, this probably looks familiar, but just go ahead and take a look here and see that you're searching CINAHL. Now when you're in the database, if you have one of these pop-up uh, chat uh, boxes pop up. Just know that you can chat with a librarian. Um, this chat box will direct you to librarians at the University of Akron Library, so that's Beers and Science Library, which is fine, um, but we also have our own chat boxes on the Wayne College website, but that's very convenient if you have a question, but I don't have one, so I'm going to say no thanks here, so I can continue searching. And then at, at our most basic, I can just go ahead and type in my um, topic here, so trauma nursing. Okay, now if I do this and click on search, this is probably one of the most basic searches you could do where you just throw something out there and hope it sticks. Um, but we're going to talk about ways that you can improve your search results um, here in a few seconds. But that at its most basic is how you would start searching this. Just type something in this top line and click on search. So instead of just putting in a basic search term and hoping to get some results, um, or perhaps going through many, many results searching for what we're looking for, let's take a look at how we can use some advanced searching techniques. And again, we teach a lot of this in the information literacy modules, but it's okay if you, if you, hit, if you haven't completed those yet, because we'll demonstrate some of the most um, normally used database search strategies that help uh, narrowing down your search. And th there are three that I want to point out when you're doing a keyword search in a database. One is using your Boolean operators, and I'm talking about the words and, or, and not uh, in your search strategy. Uh, implementing phrases or adjacency searching, so keeping your terms tight and close together. And then finally, truncation. So let's see how these work in the CINAHL database. Okay, let's start out by looking at the first tool that I'd like you to use when you're doing an advanced keyword search, and that's using your Boolean operators. If you notice these three fields that you can type in, and you could also tell it where to look, which is also an advanced search strategy that we're not going to use right now. Um, you can play with, though. Um, but you can see that these three fields that you type in are joined by the word and, and that's a Boolean operator that narrows down your search. So if you type something up on the top line and something on the second line and join it with and, it's requiring that both of those terms are in your search results, and therefore it narrows down your search. Now you can change these to the other operators that do the other things like or. You can join two phrases and by using or you're going to get more search results because you're being more flexible. I want this or that. I don't care which one. And you can add even more ors to be even more broad in your search results. So the first thing I want to do is start out with my trauma nurse. Trauma nursing. And then I might want to look at uh, emergency room nursing. So let's do emergency nursing. And because it's joined with the with the Boolean operator or, I'm going to get more search results than just trauma nursing. Either one has to be present. 
So if I look at my search results, I have over 17,000 search results. And let's say I want to even go even further and put or uh, transport nursing. So if I want to be on a transport operation, so transport nursing, I should expect to get even more search results. So I had 17,275, so I threw in maybe another 100 in there. Okay, so or means more. Now not does exactly what it sounds like. It eliminates uh, search results. So if you're trying to eliminate something, like there's a particular term that's showing up in your search results that th that's throwing you off, you can say not and then that term to have it eliminated from your search results. Okay, use that sparingly because sometimes that also has uh, strange effects. So that's using your Boolean operators and you can actually just type them across here all on one line if you type in the Boolean operator in between your search terms. But I'm kind of building a search here so I'm going to go ahead and leave them on their separate lines just to demonstrate some other things that might be going on. Now something else that you might be considering is how closely your words are to each other. The, the closest they can be would be a phrase search and you can accomplish this by putting your terms inside quotation marks. So if you put quotation marks around each of your search terms it's going to tighten up the search and uh, make sure that those words are exactly as you type them in that order. Okay. So if you, uh, if you use your phrase searching, that's going to tighten up your search a little bit more. And I've eliminated a lot of results that may have had those words kind of spaced out from each other. Now there is another kind of um, way that you can control the adjacency of these terms without making them exactly next to each other. And that's called adjacency. In this particular database, you can um, control how many words apart your terms are from each other. So if I wanted emergency uh, and nursing within two near two words of each other, you use this near operator. That N stands for near. 2 stands for how many words I want them close to each other. And then it's not exactly as tight as a phrase search. However, I can leave it open for emergency room nursing or emergency department nursing or nursing in an emergency. So it makes sure that those terms are kind of close together. So that probably will expand my search just a tad. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so I just threw in an extra thousand here. So this may seem counterintuitive right now, um, but it will help with finding exactly what you're looking for. Now the other tool that I'd like you to consider using is called truncation. So, so far I'm looking for the word nursing and the database doesn't automatically know that I'm actually looking for nurses, nurse or nursing. So I can actually tell it that by cutting off the the word down to its root. So I'm going to cut off the ing and insert my truncation symbol which is an asterisk in this database. And then I can go ahead and go through and truncate all the terms that I think would be likely to have different word endings. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and truncate nurse on all three of these terms and I'll, I of course will get more search results when I click on search. So that will expand my search now to um, over almost 19,000 results. So at this point, that might seem counterintuitive and not a good thing to do, but we're about to start limiting our search results based on our search criteria. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and just put all of this on one line here um, so that when I start using my, um, my uh, limiters, I kind of have a good idea what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and just put all of these on one line here. And then I could also add some ands here if I wanted to. So let's get all this up there. So like I said, you can have all of your search terms kind of all on one line as long as you put your ors all together. And then if I wanted to limit it with a term, so let's say I wanted to go ahead and um, say I really wanted to look for these terms, any of them will work. And then I also want to look at information on salary or something like that. Oh, they recommend salary or income or wages. So I'm going to take their recommendation there and then perform this search and it's going to take that almost 19,000 results and then require that one of those other terms are in my search results and as you can see that's 146 results so that's probably a really good search to start looking at some results but I'm going to go ahead and take this off for now 
go back to my 18,000 plus results and then um, we'll start looking at some of the other ways that we're going to limit our search so that we can meet the requirements of this assignment. Okay, so now that we have some search results to play with, I want to go ahead and take a look at some of our other advanced search strategies which include the limiters that are included in the database. And we're going to be looking at some specific ones that are associated with your particular assignment. So the first one is to make sure we know how to limit to scholarly or peer-reviewed results. And that's one way that we're going to limit our results. The next thing that we want to do is um, also limit it to any article that have the first author being a nurse. So we have to make sure that the first author listed is a nurse and some of the things that we could look to verify this uh, once we use that limiter are looking at the particular articles and looking at their credentials and you're going to be looking for whether they're an RS, uh, RN, BSN, MSN, or PhD in their credentials. Okay, and then we also want to make sure that the publication date is no older than five years. So we want to keep our research results pretty current and that, that would be true of most medical or allied health um, literature. If you're trying to find current information, five years is probably a good rule of thumb. So let's go ahead and see how this will work in the CINAHL database. Now up to this point in the CINAHL database, we've just been playing around with the search fields here. And uh, really there's a lot more to this database than just typing in your keywords and terms. We still want to limit our search results to meet the criteria of the assignment. And use these tools that are included with the various databases to save you time. Because if you had to go through 19,000 results and look for the requirements like what is the publication date and um, is the first author a nurse, those types of things, you're going to be wasting your time. So there are powerful limiters and uh, ways that you can refine your results that are built into this database. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and click on the advanced search and it should retain our search up at the top of the page. So I liked our keywords and how we used our truncation and our adjacency to, to um, put together a really good search. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to use the limiters that are included in this database, like uh, the peer-reviewed box. So if I want to make sure that all of my results are from peer-reviewed journals, um, I can go ahead and check that box. And then here's the one that we really need. The first author is a nurse. So we're going to check that one as well. And then um, the one I skipped up here is the publication date. So we want to make sure that uh, the articles appear in the past five years. So let's do 2015 to 2020. You don't have to put the month in if you don't want to. And then there's other ones that you can check. Just keep in mind that the more things that you select, the less search results you're going to get. And when you're first starting out, maybe just do the ones that are required of you and then go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and now that I have those selected, I'm going to uh, click on the search button and see how that refined my search results. So instead of 19,000, I have 234, which is a really good number to kind of play with. I'm really not done now. I can narrow it down a little bit more, but let's, let's go ahead and review how we refined our results for our current search. It reminds us over here on the left what our Boolean phrase search is, okay? And then uh, it also tells us our limiters, publication date, peer-reviewed, and first author is a nurse. There are other ways that you can limit your search results. For example, if you wanted to tighten up the dates and maybe just look at something in the past couple years, you could do that. Um, now note that even though I said 2020 was okay, it limited it put my limiter to 2019 because there just weren't any articles in 2020 with those particular search terms. So don't be alarmed if this shows up a little different than what you typed in. Um, also, geography might be something that you want to limit it by. If you're seeing a lot of articles out of um, foreign uh, journals because this is an international database, you could change that if you wanted to and uh, just do the United States. But right now, I think this is a pretty good uh, way to start searching. 
Now, the way that our results are going to be displayed, the default is by relevance. And this means that it took the terms that I typed into the search bar, my Boolean search, and it weighted those words. And so the more often those words show up in the important parts of the record, for example, the title, the subject headings, the journal name, those float up to the top of the search results. So the ones that you see first under a relevant search are stronger with those words that you typed in. However, that may not be how you want your search results displayed. So if you want to change it to get the most newest information up at the top of the list, you can change it. But usually relevance is a good way to start, especially when you're still brainstorming. Don't forget that sheet of paper you have um, that you're going to be writing down other words that you might want to incorporate into your search. Like you can com come back up here and add words or change the words up there and really play with your search. But that's really up to you. Um, but relevance is a really good way to start looking at your results. So in the next segment we'll go ahead and take a look at how you're actually going to open these up and retrieve your results. Now that we've performed our search and limited the search results and refined it to match our requirements for our assignment, now it's time to actually look at some of the articles that were retrieved and determine whether or not they're going to be ones that I'm going to consider for my uh, paper. Now that is completely up to you. You're going to have to spend some time looking at your results and going beyond this page. So a lot of um, students like to just judge a, an article by its title, but you really do need to dive in a little bit more deeply before you decide whether or not you want to um, actually track down the article. So what I recommend that you do is actually go into the full record and not just look at the short record. And this will have a little bit more information here, including um, some information about the authors, the name of the journal. Um, but probably most importantly is take a look at these major subjects and minor subjects because this is going to be your inspiration for um, refining your search. So you might find some really good words to work into your, uh, your search strategy. Um, as you're moving forward and jot down some ideas on that sheet of paper. And also, most importantly, is the abstract. So this is a summary of the articles, not the full article. And then also look for your keywords and context. Fi try to determine why did this search come, why did this result come from my search? So you can see all the times that you see trauma and nursing. Um, they'll be bold, okay? Now this partic particular article has the um, the web version of the article below, which is great for screen readers. So if you wanted to go ahead and have this read to you, you can go ahead and do that. And again, your search terms are bold so that you can see your keywords in context, like here's trauma nursing as a phrase. So that's probably why that came up. Um, but it's really up to you to look at this, read it over carefully, use those critical thinking skills and say, okay, is this appropriate for my assignment? And then um, the one last thing you want to do, if you can and bring up the PDF full text and that would be just like as if it was in the original journal. So you could take a look and um, look at the first author and what their credentials are. Um, and then also you're looking for an article that is research based. Um, even though all of the articles retrieved are probably from peer reviewed journals, occasionally you'll find ones that are um, book reviews or letters to the editor, but not really um, meaty articles. Now this one is because it's, uh, it did actually is a research study that has their methods listed. Um, how they did their study and their results are presented in tables. There's a lot of data. So this looks like a scholarly peer reviewed article. And then the one thing you also want to check is go to the end of the article and see how extensive the references are. So those are the types of things that you're going to be looking for and confirming um, to say, is this a good article to use with my um, for my research paper. So I'm going to go back to my results list. So this one, this particular article, if I wanted to use it, um, is readily available. So either in the web version, the HTML version, or the PDF full text. And so you're going to want to take a look at some of these. Now keep in mind, there are some clues here. So if you take a look at this, this is out of the Korean Journal of Adult Nursing. So unless I'm interested in Korean nursing, I'm probably not going to pick this one. So I can go ahead and scroll past that. So, um, And a lot of these are translated into English. So don't be alarmed if one does sound good to you and you want to track it down a lot of times 
the um, article will be in English. The other thing you're looking at is how to pull it up. So you see a lot of these have the full text. This database is fantastic um, as far as how much full text it includes. So you'll see that the majority of these first articles do include the full text attached to it. Now this particular one, Occupational Stress, um, this one does not have the full text listed. It has a full text finder. Now, I'm looking at this one though and I'm thinking, oh, probably not. It looks like it was written in Spanish, um, but I can take a look at it a little bit more clearly and read the abstract and see if it sounds interesting to me. Um, I do see that even though um, there's a lot of Spanish language, um, it looks like it's from Brazil, um, it is translated into English. So if I did want to read this article, I could track it down with a full text finder. But let's find one that I'm, I'm particularly interested in. I'm going to go back to my results list. And I'm going to look at one, uh, let's see, that isn't available in full text, so I can kind of walk through that um, full text finder. Okay, so let's say um, this one, Emergency Nurse Practitioners, State by State, A Call to Action. Um, I see here that this is actually one of those articles that's an editorial, so I'm probably not going to check this one out. So let's look at this next one, number 28 on my list. Um, let's say I'm interested in this topic. I can see that there's the full text finder. So I followed that link and it opens up a new page. This full text finder is designed, even though the full text is not available in this CINAHL database, it's going to link me to where the full text might be. So uh, if I take a look here, I see that there's three options. Um, I can get the full text from Ovid and there's, it, it's actually three things saying the same thing. But I'm going to choose this last one and follow the link. It's going to swing over into this other nursing database that we have where the full text actually lives. And so it's reminding me here about the article and the summary here. And then over here on the side, it has the article as a PDF that I can go ahead and bring up and see if this is one that I want to use. So um, I can go ahead and check out the author's credentials again, read over the abstract, and again this looks like that this is a research study, so this would be another good one to consider. So those are the ways that you can actually bring up the article. Now if you ever find yourself in a situation, let me see, I'm going to scroll down here, where it's not um, a PDF, it doesn't have the full text, um, I'm looking for one that, oh here we go, so let's see, number 46 on my list here, it says request this item through interlibrary loan. That's because it's not full text, it's not full text in another database, at least um, as far as we know. And so what this process is, is to have the library staff request this um, to be scanned from another library. So we're going to be looking for another library that has this journal um, in their stacks and then request that they send it to us. So if you want to do this, um, you would click on that link and it's going to take you to the interlibrary loan page where you're going to log in with your UANet ID and password. And then um, you're going to complete a request. Um, it's an article and it, it already uh, entered a lot of the data from that database right into the field and then I can submit my request. Now keep in mind this does take time. This this means that somebody, um, there's a librarian up at the University of Akron Libraries who's going to place the request and then the other library has to scan it and send it. So you're going to want to leave a week at least to get this article and then it will be, it will be sent to you in this interlibrary loan system. Uh, you'll get an email saying it's ready and then you could always check um, to see if it's ready by going back into your interlibrary loan account. But just keep in mind that those interlibrary loan requests do take time and um, if you're not really interested in this article you could probably find another one that is full text. Like here's another one that's um, request through interlibrary loan but um, it's probably not one that I'm interested in. So those are options uh, to request the actual articles to make sure that um, you can get it in time and so check the timeline on your assignment and um, if at all possible, if it's um, coming up and you need your article soon, then you're going to want to choose one of these that either is full text or linked full text. 
Now at this point you have all the tools that you need to get started, um, but as you go it's really important that you know how to ask for help along the way because um, maybe the technology isn't working or you're not getting the search results or maybe you need to um, ask somebody how you can tweak your search terms to get the search results that you need. So um, we want to be here to help you um, along that path and so here are all the different ways that you can get a hold of us. So you can um, chat with us. So throughout the presentation you probably saw a lot of those chat boxes just popping up while I was in the database. So there are different chat options and they go to different places. So um, the chat boxes that are on Wayne College Library's website and in our LibGuide and in our online classroom, those all come to the Wayne College Library staff, okay? So just so you can anticipate who's going to be answering those questions. Now if you use any of the chat boxes that popped up either on the um, University of Akron Library's website or in any of the databases, those chat requests go up to the University of Akron Libraries that's staffed by um, Barrison Science Librarians and occasionally myself. So. Um, Either way, you, you'll get help, but just keep in mind that um, the um, folks here at Wayne College Library are very familiar with this assignment, so you can ask us or, or use the other chat boxes. There are other options than chat, though. Um, if you would prefer to just text us, go ahead and enter our text number, like maybe make a contact on your cell phone um, and just call it Wayne College Library and put our text number. Also, email is great. Um, it's a great way to get a hold of us. Um, like if it's 2.30 in the morning and you're doing your research, um, you know we're not here, but you can go ahead and ask your question and we'll get it first thing in the morning. Um, but at during the, um, live, the times that we're open, uh, we treat those email requests just like phone calls. So uh, we'll get back to you right away. And of course, there's our phone number there. Um, now, if you wanted to download the chat app. Um, you can download it onto your phone so that you have it on your phone if you're trying to multitask and you're searching and you just want to chat with us um, on your device. Um, there is a way that you can download the app. It's called Ask a Librarian um, and the address is on the page. But go ahead and download that app and then once you're in the app and it's loaded, just search for UA Wayne College Library and then you'll be chatting with us just like you would if um, you were using one of our chat boxes. So that is um, all the different ways you can get a hold of us, don't be shy, please ask for help and we'd be happy to help you with this assignment.